好，欢迎收看《美洲华尔街》，我是赵冰晶。在欧洲和中国股市企稳的帮衬之下，本周的美股呢，本应该是美好的，但是市场却是没能给个投资者好脸色，不断的震荡下行。那么承压的主要原因呢，是众多的大公司财报结果不及预期。上周银行股的漂亮成绩单，本周呢，并没有出现在科技股的身上，苹果公司也只是勉强的给出了及格的答卷。暗淡的展望，多家评级的下调，再加上 IBM、微软等大型公司业绩的打压，注定呢是让本周的市场低迷。具体来看，周一的美股呢是微幅高收十三点，希腊问题呢是迈出了重要的一步，希腊呢终于偿还了首笔的贷款，而中国股市呢也是奋力反击，重新占领了四千点的大关。那么周二开始呢，美股是大变脸，道指重挫接近两百点。苹果公司呢是在周二盘后公布了财报，显示出上季度的盈利以及营收呢均是勉强的超出预期，并且呢也是下调了未来的展望，导致苹果公司的股价呢是急跌了百分之四点五，市值呢是一下子蒸发掉了四百多亿。而在周三呢，科技股的财报不佳带来的市场卖压情绪严重，道指呢是下跌了六十点，其中墨西哥卷公司 c h i p o l e 呢是表现抢眼，股价上涨了百分之八。周四美股呢是区间下滑，道指下探了一百二十点。工业巨头们的财报呢也都是不理想，三 M 公司以及凯特皮勒公司的业绩呢都是堪忧。而在周五呢，美股是继续下滑，估值呢是连续四连阴，道指下挫超过了一百点。大家知道，生物医药行业呢是投资者最喜欢的掘金圣地之一，但是啊，大起大落的高风险走势呢，也是让许多人对其避而远之。最近呢，有一只生物医药股出现了稳健的涨幅，两次的收购再加上不错的财报呢，是让这只股票成为了本周的妖股之一。还有一只妖股呢，也是我们的老朋友了，可穿戴概念股。那么在本周科技股几家欢喜几家忧的情况下，是什么让它魅力不减呢？大家好，我是美国中文投资网记者 Laura。美国股市又迎来财报发布季，虽然科技巨头们的命运不尽相同，但是有一只前期我们非常关注的科技板块妖股，在股价暴跌后又悄悄涨回了前期高点附近。这就是运动相机品牌 GoPro 的芯片厂商 a m b r e l l a 股票代码 AMBA。今年五月中旬开始 ，AMBA 逆势上涨，几乎在一个月内实现了翻倍。然而，就在创下一百二十八美元新高后的第二天 ，AMBA 遭到 C 转做空，股价在两个交易日内分别重挫百分之五和百分之二十。不过，这份做空报告并没有实质性的看空理由。AMBA 在两天的下跌后便站稳脚跟，在经历了半个月的调整后，重新启动了上涨模式。在以三千万美元现金收购意大利私人公司 Vislab 进军智能汽车行业，以及最大客户 GoPro 宣布和 Toyota 合作的两大利好消息的带动下，目前一百二十二点五美元的股价已经接近前期高点。多家投行也都看好收购 Vislab 这桩交易，认为可以帮助 AMBA 扩大市场、提高多样性、定价和毛利率。目前 ，AMBA 已经涉足智能汽车行业和高清摄像行业未来两大科技发展趋势，并且拥有稳定的客户群和一定的技术优势。如果九月三日盘后发布的财报符合预期的话，未来股价可能进一步突破上涨。生物科技巨头之一 c e l l g e n 股票代码 CELG 最近大动作不断，让其股价走出了一波维持一个多月的上涨行情。从六月十八日启动至今，已经上涨了百分之二十四，这在如 c e l l g e n 这个体量的大公司中并不常见。六月底 c e l l g e n 宣布入股专注于癌症基因疗法的四星股 Juno 股票代码 JUNO， 二者未来将共同研究 CAR T 和 TCR 癌症治疗科技。分析师认为，这是 c e l l g e n 对未来的投资。收购完成后，众多投行也分。纷纷提升了 Cell 镜评级。七月十四日 ，Cell 镜又把 Receptos 股票代码 RCPT 以七十二亿美元收入囊中，加强了自己的炎症和免疫药物组合。这次收购同样受到广泛看好 ，Cell 镜股价次日飙升百分之六点九五。而本周四盘前发布的财报也符合上周提升后的前瞻指引，每股盈利一点二三美元，略好于分析师预期，营收同比增长百分之二十一点六，达到二十二点八亿美元，同样略高于二十二点七亿美元的预期。著名的艾略特波浪理论呢，是分析师们心中有效的预测市场的工具之一。那么，在本次旧金山 Money Show 的现场当中呢，我们就有幸采访了这位研究理论的行业专家 Steven Hartberg， 和他探讨了目前中美股市呢是处于哪一浪当中，以及投资者应当如何应对。
Stephen Hatchberg 是著名的波浪理论的专家。那么现在中美两国的股市分别是处于哪一轮波浪当中呢？股民朋友们又该如何从中操作呢？我们一起来听一下。Hi, Steve. Thank you for joining us. So, would you mind introduce us a little bit about Elliott wave theory?、Uh, based on your theory, which wave are we in right now? Well, Elliott wave、uh, model that we use was developed by R. N. Elliott back in the 1930s in the United、uh -huh. States, and it basically looks at crowd psychology. And he figured out that crowd psychology traces out specific patterns.、Mm -hmm. When people get more optimistic, they do so in a pattern way. And when the trend goes down, they get more pessimistic. They do so in a pattern way. So what we do at Elliott Wave International is look at these patterns because they imply something about the future,、uh, and that's what we're looking at now. It's a little bit different in different markets across the world.、Uh, for example, the United States is at the end of what we consider a, a, a fifth wave within a, a big upward correction, and the right and the Chinese stock market is in a different situation right now. So does the Elliott wave theory also apply to the Chinese stock market? The Elliott wave theory applies to any freely traded market where people are participating. There's a lot of volume and a lot of emotion because what we're looking at is the psychology of people as they behave in in groups. And so China is a great example of of where it works. Yeah. So where、uh, which wave、uh, are the Chinese stock market? Well, China had that big top in October of 2007 with the United States, and then had a major decline. I think it lost about 70 percent, 71 percent to Shanghai、right. uh, over the next year into late 2008. And since then, we've had this giant ABC rally. ABCs in Elliott wave terminology means counter trend. So we had a big run up up into 2009, and then a pullback, and now a, a sharp, sharp move up into 2015.、Uh -huh. I think that move is ending or is over. Uh, you know, we had that big spike up into a high into June. We had、uh, a huge reversal down 35 percent in just 18 trading days, and、uh, it wasn't quite as fast as it was in the crash of 1987 in the U.S. market, but it's pretty close. And I think we're now turning the corner to the downside in the Chinese stock market. Then, how do the Chinese investors position best in that kind of situation? It's really tough because、uh, the government in China is trying to do everything they can to keep the prices up, but it's the same. Same thing that we did in the United States in 1929 when we tried to stop the market from going down, and we we even banned short selling in financial shares here in 2008 in the United States. It doesn't work. People have to express their emotion, and I think for the average Chinese investor, being safe right now, being in cash or cash equivalents, makes the most sense until this emotion, this negativism, plays itself out. Pessimism reaches an extreme, and you set yourself up for the next great rally. Okay, and I want、uh, to ask you about Nasdaq since Nasdaq hit a, a intraday high yesterday after it came back up、uh, to five thousand. So... Right. This is another area where a lot of excess of speculation is is coming and bursting forth within the price structure.、Mm -hmm. Most of the Nasdaq's rally last year was made up of Apple,、right. uh, and today we've had、uh, the Google earnings come out, and people are really excited about that. And it's a very narrow rally. It's been narrowed in these giant tech shares right now, and I think it's it's usually that usually signals a sign of excess and excess speculation, and that tends to come. At the end of big long moves, and we've had a long rally since 2009. I think that rally is just about ending. Oh, okay, so you're bearish on technology stocks. We're very bearish across the board on financial assets. I think we've had a major credit boom, credit cycle within this country since uh, 2009, uh, and right now we have more worldwide debt than we do. Than we did at the high in 2007, and I think that the collapse of that debt, being it paid off. Bankruptcies restructuring is what's going to fuel what we think is going to be a big deflationary event across the world, where financial assets collapse in prices. So, Steve, what's your view about dollar? Well, the thing about the dollar is that most of the worldwide debt is dollar denominated, and so when debt has to be paid off, or you have to service it, or if it goes bankrupt or restructured, you need dollars to pay those debts. So, the demand for dollars is going to increase. As dollars are extinguished through bankruptcies or whatever, or or debt that comes due and needs to be paid off, people need dollars to pay it. So I think that's going to give a boost and a floor to the dollar. We've had a big run up. People got were very surprised. We've been very bullish since 2008 on the dollar. Well, we've had that run up, and now we've had a correction since March in the dollar. And I think that correction may not be quite over, but we're we're well through it. And once it ends, I think the dollar is going to start rallying again. And going to new highs.
Thank you. Thank you.